What's your go to karaoke song? It's the small town girl Slowly, slowly In a lonely world Compliment you have ever seen You've lost weight <laughs> Your favorite radio show? Uh, wake up with it, man Oh, That's man Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Dosto, Vocal for Local Season 3 ke dousre episode mein aapka istikbal karta hoon And with me today, a very talented guy Who's known as Katri Guy Who hosted FIFA Fan Festival for 8 hours every day and that was crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, the only comedian uh, from Qatar, please welcome Hamad Al Amari. Habibi, shakwarik and welcome. Thank you so much. You are also known as Qatari guy. There is some story behind this title, I'm yeah. sure. So, I don't like it, but <laughs> it is it is what it is because this came out when I I first went on stage in 2011. Mhm. To do comedy And then someone circulated the clip Okay And then I started bumping into people And they're like You're that Qatari guy You're that Qatari guy You're that Because no one knows my name Uh huh um, So everywhere I went It was like Oh the Qatari guy You know the Qatari guy Who does this joke You know the Qatari guy who So then I was like You know what Yeah I'm the okay. Qatari guy And then I used this specifically For the show Q-Tips Which I host with The founder of I Love Qatar Mr. Q, Net, Mr. Which Q, is Mr. Yeah. Q Yeah And that's One thing that's funny to me is Everyone that meets me will be like, oh, Mr. Q. And I'm like, you guys really don't pay attention. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like he, first of all, he's, his complexion is very different. So. Yeah. <laughs> plus the height. Plus the accent. Right. Plus, you know, he, he's a good looking dude. Mm. So, <laughs> you know, for me, it's like, I'm the Qatari guy. Oh, like, okay. You know. Uh, so, yeah, we keep it specifically to that. Um, that show Q-Tips we had I think we're over 200 episodes now right. and you can watch it on Qatar Airways so yeah I mean that's where it came I saw, from it I was saw just... one of your story where I think Mr. Q <coughs> was showing uh, the Q-Tips on uh, on uh, the plane actually there was yeah. some story you shared as well yesterday. yeah yeah so now it's like a, a little joke that we have for each other so every time I go on a plane I'll tag him and every time he goes on a plane I'll tag me it's a cross promotion yeah. <laughs> Which, but he travels a lot more than me so he's he's winning uh, <laughs> he's, fantastic yeah fantastic but, uh, yeah so this Good. is how you became Katari guy yeah it was just a you know there's a lot of things from my life that people would have said that I would have owned but this is this is a nicer one <laughs> so okay. I took ownership of it I'm nice, the Qatari nice. guy and then that became synonymous with Q-tips um, yeah but for all other purposes I'm Hamad Al-Ammari and that's my name that's all I have I'm an artist so yes so. Um, ladies and gentlemen <laughs> Hamad Al-Ammari on FM 107 Dil Sadesi today so from where if I talk about this passion for uh, comedy so uh, and stage anchoring. So how was the journey, and from where uh, this spark came into you? Like, yes, man, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm here for comedy. Um, I don't know. Um, since I was, I, when I was younger, mm-hmm. I was obviously influenced a lot by TV and, you know, what we were watching. I grew up in America and Ireland, and then I went to the UK for university. So, I was exposed to a lot of. You know, TV culture, pop culture in the times, which mm-hmm. is mostly Western. So, for me, that entertainment thing was was a big deal, and uh, I was kind of always, you know, after the age of 11, 12, I was always kind of the guy who was trying to be entertaining, doing okay. accents, doing whatever. And but I never thought like I thought it was just what I, you know, what you did. But I never thought that that would be the career or any kind of thing that I would get into or mm-hmm. even the entertainment industry from production to being on the stage um, and in 2011 my friend Mohammed Kamal who was doing comedy at the time made it sound like if I didn't show up to the stage mm-hmm. that'll be the end of the world <laughs> and uh, he was like I put your name on this list you have to come you have to show up and I wrote my first five minutes and he was like you have five minutes and he made it like you know seem like it you know if I went five minutes and ten seconds that you know I'll be beaten up or something I don't know but um, wrote it went on stage delivered it the five minutes turned into ten minutes because it was my first time on stage I had no idea what I was doing okay. I didn't know what timing was I didn't uh-huh. know what punchlines were I didn't <laughs> but I went for it and yeah 12 years ago now so, so 2011 yeah and uh, that was kind of where it, the first time that I you know went on a stage in front of people I still have like severe stage fright so okay. 
before I go on the stage, I'm I'm generally nervous, and even when I'm on stage, I can feel my body like shaking, and I sweat, and I feel like I'm gonna, you know. That's why I don't eat before a show or okay. anywhere near it, because if it's in there, it might come up. So I have this really terrible fear okay. <laughs> of standing in front of people. But you know, come on, I, it, I, I chose the it right. It didn't career. look like during uh, FIFA fan uh, festival. I mean, two, how many people? Eighty thousand, forty thousand. Uh, yeah, the maximum 60, capacity was um, 40,000, but then there were certain days it went over uh, because of just the size, like the Moroccan fans, when yeah. they, like that journey in the World Cup, the football was amazing. Like it just added so much more to how, like the quality of the competition. Right. And the fact that Morocco went far, it was just, you know, a great turnout. And then obviously Argentina, Brazil have and Portugal because of Messi and Ronaldo, obviously. Um, massive turnouts for those games. So there was days where there was 6,000 people and there was days where there was 40,000 40, people. So um, when the football was on, it was packed, high energy, and I kind of just feed off of that energy. So day one, it was terrifying. But then after 45 seconds, I'm going on stage. Oh you build a rapport and it's just go time so it's just a show and right. you gotta deliver so I feel like I did that every day and and I fantastic you have done a great great job <laughs> really you. Hamid I'm fantastic job because I was there a lot of times yeah. and I was like oh man look at this dude he's doing fantastic phenomenal job and also <laughs> catering uh, the diversity you see uh, yeah. you know the Brazilian there Portuguese there Moroccan there and you're catering everyone and talking with everyone you know yeah. that was My, great stuff uh, It was very hard sometimes to switch to Arabic because a lot of people were speaking English. Right. They're like So you'd have to switch back to the Arabic a little bit and kind of engage with the Arab fans. But mm -hmm. yeah, the, the turnout was massive. And as you said, from all over the world. And I met people from, you know, places that I didn't even think would ever be here, you know. Right. Uh, or countries or nationalities that would ever come to... Qatar, but that just goes to show that Qatar is a kind of place for everyone. I met a lot more people from around the world here than I ever did when I was traveling. So, mm. nice. You know, I think it's what 120 nationalities that live in Qatar and call yeah. it home. So, and then in the World Cup, people came together for the football and it was fantastic. And then we had music, which is, you know, probably my first true love uh, that connects people on another level. Right. You know, so people came to have a good time. And I was part of that good time, so good times. <laughs> Better times. Inshallah. <laughs> Fantastic. So, uh, I mean, uh, if I talk about the FIFA Fan Festival, yeah, every day was crazy. Yeah. But one crazy moment, like one moment which is still very, very fresh in your heart, in your memories. Yeah. What was that? Oh, the, it had to be the opening event, just because I was on stage with so many legends. David Trezeguet, I grew up watching him, Roberto Carlos, right. uh, and some like uh, Luther Mathias, who my dad was watching, oh. <laughs> you know, and I got to meet them all and just shake their hands. And then I was inches away from the World Cup trophy, which is unbelievable. I got to meet Cafu multiple that, times, right. who is for me one of the greatest things that ever happened to football. He just changed. He, he, you know, what he was doing at AC Milan was just insane. So the fact that the opening day, I have to go on stage, introduce the president of FIFA, uh, Hassan Adawadi, Secretary General, His Excellency Hassan Adawadi, and 13... Legends. Legends, <laughs> like people that you go, oh my God. Yeah. And I'm on stage next to all of them, you know. Um, yeah, then they're all World Cup winners. Uh, So yeah, it was just a great moment that, and for me, it was like seeing them turn into, you know, little kids again, because they were on stage having a good time, passing the World Cup uh, trophy yeah. around, and they're having a really cool time. And I remember in my ear, you know, we need to get them off, we have a schedule. We have and I'm just like, yeah, there's no, I'm enjoying this, they're enjoying this. I'm not gonna make any announcements. Now. Right, right. <laughs> so they ended up sending someone on stage to be like, Can you, ah, can you move? Because okay, we have okay. things to do. But for me, I was like, yeah, I want it. I want this moment to last forever. <laughs> But yeah, the show must go on. Right. And then after that, they had, um, you know, uh, shows and artists and the amount of artists. Like I, I got to meet Paul Van Dyke, 
Julian Marley, mm-hmm. Sean Paul, um, who else? Marian Faris, Maluma. Yeah. But yeah, just so many. Nora Fatah, he was there. Yeah. And I, you know, just the turnout. There's, she's got a lot of love, man. I, I, I was there, Nora Fatah. Yeah. I, I was there. You came for that her, video, you? I, you, I you never came for the football. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't come in. I was there. <laughs> you went for Nora Fatah. <laughs> <laughs> No, but she's killer, man. Like yeah, she has, she, she's. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, for her, uh, so many people were there. Yeah. And when exactly when she put the Indian flag, uh, OMG, that was the moment. I put that video on TikTok. Yeah. It went viral. Uh, yeah. Three, four million views. Yeah. It's yeah. I mean, yeah. She's got one hell of a turnout, man. Um, and then later, people were saying, why she didn't put uh, Moroccan flag? And then later, at the end of the uh, her trans, I think she put also Moroccan flag. So See, this she made is one thing happy. like where. Um, You can't please everyone. You know what I mean? I would get a lot of that as well. But you don't focus on that, you know? If there's 10,000 happy people yeah. and 100 unhappy people. Exactly. What are you going to do? Gonna I'm do. usually the most unhappy person anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> and no one listens to me. So. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there are these kind of moments, but you have to kind of just be professional, get on with it. And if you've made a mistake, apologize, move on. But Actually. Most of the time in comedy, when I'm telling jokes in the spirit of fun and I'm telling jokes, don't expect an apology because right. it's a joke. You so, know, if you come to a comedy show yeah. and think that I'm, it's not a therapy session. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling jokes yeah. uh, and, you know, they're not intended to offend or anything like that. So, so it's a joke. It's a joke. Yeah. So now, now coming back to comedy, yeah. uh, what is your process uh, for creating and refining comedy material? Um, it's quite a lengthy one. Uh, I write kind of key moments mm-hmm. that I would have, or you know, I would. My phone. I'm always writing something, so I wrote a couple of notes when I came in through the gate today. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. You have. You guys have a sign in the room. <laughs> so you come in, and there's a sign that says "write," and then the roundabout. There's no right. <laughs> so, so I just made a quick note of that. But I kind of try and remember those moments mm-hmm. and make a note of them. And then when I come back to craft the 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, however long it needs to be, it's, you know, you write it and then I would go do it in front of a mirror or do it in front of a closed group. Mm-hmm. And I would record it every time. And then I would listen to my recordings. So I can understand if I can deliver it better. So there's a lot of work that goes into making a 10 minute set or a 15 minute set. And sometimes one story could be 20 minutes, but it'll have so many you know, segues or moments in it so, that, it, that so. are the punchlines. And so it, it depends on, you know, the story. It depends on the audience and it depends on. So when I'm going to corporate events, mm-hmm. which is mostly what Uh, you know, I'll either do a staff day or an inauguration or, you know, a public yeah. event. Or, so I get commissioned for it. And, you know, people would ask me if I can do an hour. I'm like, yeah, sure, I can do an hour. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's probably two, three months of work. So, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it's been since 2011. Obviously, processes change. And then writing it in Arabic is very different from writing it in English. So. Right. Kind of subjects remain the same, but the delivery and and the nuances are different. So creating the punch is totally a uh, new way. Yeah, I mean, the punchline in English would wouldn't. Yeah, exactly. You know, it wouldn't It's translate immediately. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. so there's a different way of telling the story and things like that. But uh, yeah, generally speaking, I would try and if I'm in a moment where I think, oh, I'm inspired now by this thing or this situation in my life that happened. Mm-hmm. I would make a note of it and then I would write a story to either exaggerate it or take away from it and then I would record it and then I would listen to it and then just keep developing it there and now I get to travel a little bit more and I'm trying to do open mics wherever I can just to nice finalize my you know one hour or one and a half hour so I can film it and see where that goes <laughs> But, it's yeah. all tried So you, you tried before you tried and test before going on stage with uh, among people like how's the joke is doing how's the joke? no when I go on stage yeah. I will have 
just like keywords. Oh, okay. So I'd be like, it's not a script. Okay. It's like, okay, um, passport immigration fat uh, okay. that kind of like okay <laughs> there you go that's that's the key things that i okay. need to highlight and then i would tell the story from uh, okay. from what i remember and then obviously the room because this is the thing that comedy gives you that i don't think anything else does is that you have an instant rapport you yeah, have an instant exactly. reaction right there's no way and you know if it doesn't land you still got to keep going right, right like i remember in 2017 or 16 we did a com we created a comedy club mm -hmm. and I had two and a half hours without a single laugh. <laughs> two and a half hours? Two and a half hours. <laughs> oh my god. And most, it was most yeah, demotivating you know, stuff. No, I mean, you know what? You guys paid for a show. So uh, this is what you're getting. <laughs> so I just did it. And you know, and then I would do the same material mm. the next week. Okay. And it would kill. Like it would the room is falling apart. People are, you know, side splitting. Ha <laughs> ha. And I'm like, all right, you know. So comedy is, you know, you have to have that ability to just deliver. So. But I love, like, one of the things I love most is awkward silences. And, you know, people don't get it. So a lot of times in my life, mm -hmm. I entertain myself from that. I would bump into someone and be like, oh, I know you. And I'm like, nice. And then it will go quiet. And I would just look at them. And, <laughs> I, you know, I'm entertained by that. Uh. They, they have a different experience, I guess. I, <laughs> I'm pretty sure they feel awkward. But, uh. yeah. I'm yeah, I'm 100% sure they're awkward. So, uh, but, uh, out of so many uh, comic gigs, which was uh, your most favorite or most challenging? Challenging, I think this was the most challenging where the, there was a complete silence. Like one there's gig, one, if I ask you. There's to one choose. I did on a bus. Bus? Yeah, which was early on in my life. Mm -hmm. And it was like a tour bus. Okay. And um, I was supposed to do like five minutes. Mm -hmm. And then I did like my five minutes which is like two jokes and after that mm -hmm. i'm standing up with this really terrible mic in my hand that is like a pa on a bus the guy was like oh can you tell people to you know do the safety instructions oh okay so it's like keep your seatbelt on you know fold these tables don't do this don't do that and uh. i'm standing in the middle like rocking okay. from side to side okay hitting myself on <laughs> <laughs> on this chair and that chair i'm not even balanced and uh. i'm like you know and it was just awkward it was so weird like why am i doing comedy on a bus uh. and then why am i the one to give the safety instructions uh. and then i finished and i sat in the front of the bus uh. like and you know the people <laughs> they were they're still there <laughs> they're still there behind me uh. and yeah it was just weird i'll never forget it because i didn't get any laughs i was uncomfortable yeah uh. but you know you do it and you then i was it. stuck on the bus with them for half an hour oh which was weird oh nice and yeah and it wasn't <laughs> not at the time but nowadays we can laugh about it <laughs> like comedy events in the bus huh? <laughs> yeah crazy um yeah, I mean, I've done, I've done malls, a lot of malls, I've done clubs, I've done, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it can, is can, can you share also some behind the stories of uh, FIFA Fan Festival or, or any interesting event you hosted? I mean, I mean, the World Cup, uh, so the, I, I, in 2014, there was the Brazil World Cup and they had the fan zone here. Okay. And then they had the fan zone again in 2018 when it was in Russia. They had okay. it in Al Said and in Qatar. And I was doing that as well. Okay. So I did 28 days, 30 days before as well. Same kind of, um, obviously not the same level of excitement or stage or blah, blah, blah. But, yeah. you know, I've been, for me, it's a job, right? Sir, sir. Like you go on, you do it. Um, but yeah, I mean, the FIFA Fan Festival, I was, I didn't expect to be receiving so much love. Like, mm -hmm. I have no idea how to, I had no, I, I wasn't prepared, so. you know. Um, yeah, there was a lot of tears. Uh, I met a lot of good people. Mm -hmm. And it was just, I was showered with love and I couldn't deal with it. I had no idea. I thought it was just go out, have a good time and leave. Mm -hmm. But obviously something is there that makes people connect and right you know i had a good time thoroughly and uh i don't know man it was just 
a very emotional end. Um, but yeah, well, we're having a lot more events in Doha, and hopefully, I get to be on a stage soon and interact with people from very all soon, over the world, yes. inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah. Uh, so you know, when you do comedy, there are also a lot of people. They neither laugh uh, nor they are silent, but they also do booing. Uh, we call them hecklers. Yeah. So how do you handle all those stuff? Sometimes like a heckler is good. Mm -hmm. I've only really been heckled like three or four times. Okay. And uh, it's funny when you're like, uh, they neither laugh nor think. I'm thinking, oh, Qataris. That's that's what the Qatari audience is like. You know what I mean? And come to a comedy show and, you know, it's like, loosen up. But um, sometimes they they would scream things. And if I, if I hear it, yeah. I would go for it. Okay. Um, Depends on my mood, really. Uh -huh. Sometimes I just say nothing, okay, and then people handle it. You know, I'll just stay quiet, and then they'll keep talking, and then other people will kind of get it that like, yo, be quiet. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, uh -huh. yeah, like I wouldn't, you know, I'd just be like, sometimes, yeah, I'll just stay quiet, and then sometimes I'll just go for the jugular. <laughs> you know, <laughs> depends. There's, I mean, I don't know, man. I've I've seen it. <laughs> Like there's people that go on hate campaigns. Um, there's ones that after the show, uh. they came up and like a group of girls and they just started hurling abuse at me and they're like, that's not funny. This is not funny. You're a misogynist. I'm like, whoa, wow. Like I don't come to your job, mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you know, that's that's the, that's that's what it is, right? You get to have that, and each one is special. Depends on the moment. Depends on, a, you know. A lot of the times, I would instigate crowd work, so mm -hmm. I would go to the crowd and try and get a bit of interaction. Like, like one time, I was doing this uh, show, and the first there was a table in front of me, mm -hmm. and it was a guy and a girl. And I asked the guy, where are you from? He said, I'm from India. And then I asked the girl, where are you from? She's from Pakistan. And I was like, wow, like you guys are brokering the peace. <laughs> and <laughs> and then I, and then they're like, no, 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 no. And I was like, what do you mean? And I'm like, is that your wife, or like your girlfriend? And he's like, no. I'm like, so why are you sitting on the same table? Like, you, <laughs> you know? So I would go for it All right, because right. it will make a segue into my joke about so, marriage or you know relationships yeah, yeah. or whatever so yeah. but these little gifts they come at you i still for this <laughs> till this day have no idea what their relationship is and i just know one is from india one's from pakistan uh. and they're sitting on the same table <laughs> and they're not friends <laughs> or you know they're not even friends they're not, they're not even i'm like okay this is weird so yeah oh, fantastic. certain things like that just <laughs> stick with you and i no. So how, how, how do you see Hamad? How do you see comedy scene in Qatar? I don't know really. I'm pretty kind of stick to myself, do mm -hmm. my thing. Uh, when there's an opportunity, I'll go for it. But I feel like there is a scene. I kind of disconnected because I tried to build comedians a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And I tried to be like, you know, the place for comedy and create a club and do workshops. And, right. and then after a while, I was like, you know what? Not everyone has to be a comedian. You know, yeah. let me just do me and see where it goes. And yeah, I write my own stuff. I, if I want to create stuff, I create. Um, there's a lot of people trying to do it. But in terms of stand up, mm -hmm. I don't really kind of. I don't know if there's any locals. If there are, please reach out. You know, if there's local comedians. Uh, I know that they're the first group I worked with, which is Suck, which is stand-up comedy Qatar. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're still going or not, but um, you know, if they are, you know, that's they really special. Yeah, there's this. They have a special place in my heart because it was where I started. So mm. um, there's room. There's room to my my comedy comes from what i see and my so, you know my experience experiences. my perspective right and qatar does not fail on the daily to give you something to laugh about right just because people from all over the world have to work with each other so, and i feel like generally speaking you know in the same family sometimes you don't like each other so can you imagine different <laughs> worlds coming exactly, together yeah. to work together and then it gets done <laughs> like their results yeah yeah to absolutely. me that's 
you know there's there's fun in all of that and there's jokes and all of that mm -hmm. um so there is still room there's a lot of venues there's a lot of spaces um yeah there looking, is, looking there forward to it inshallah yeah man yeah let's if there's you know if you guys need a comedian let me know <laughs> and also mr hamad you have got a lot of desi fans as well uh like yeah. indian pakistani they all yeah so how do you see comedy scene in uh, you know they see comedy scene well f the ones that i can understand <laughs> uh are pretty cool like we i worked with uh we, we had brought some comedians here uh, -huh. uh from india and they're just it's good comedy so right. i was in the audience just having a really good time uh any, any name you want to mention? I t I, I'm really like, that's the worst thing you can ask me. <laughs> like, if I didn't know my name so well, I'd probably forget it. <laughs> like, it's the worst thing for me ever, because I would meet people six, seven, eight. To, like, I would work with them for a month, uh -huh. and I have no idea what their name is. Oh my like, God. Like, every day I would see this person, sir, and sir. I'm like, mm. Mm. So... You've got Gajani memory. I just, I don't know, man. Like, it's really, I'm really bad. Like, I'll know your face. And I'll be like, yeah. I know him. You were in this place in this year, and mm -hmm. we worked together on that. But I have no idea what your name is. Uh, and I'm not, you know, I'll... There's one guy, Veer Das. Uh, he's yeah, Veer Das is cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah Veer yeah. Das. Cannon Gill. Uh, Cannon, yeah. yeah. I think, can. yeah, yeah. yeah he, he came here. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. He came here. He's super cool. I think we have the same birthday as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, 11th oh. of June. Which oh, is super cool. Yeah. It's coming, huh? 11th yeah. of June is coming. Two weeks. <laughs> yeah. 35. Mine it? is on 3rd June. 3rd of June? <laughs> yeah. Happy birthday, bro. <laughs> Thank How you so much. How old are you going to be? I'm going to be 34. 34? <laughs> yeah. Nice. It's a good year, 34. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a good year for me, anyway. <laughs> hopefully yours is as good as mine. Thank you. And hopefully 35 And, will and, be and you know one. what? I'll share my birthday with His Honor uh, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al-Sani. Yes. It's 3rd June. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm really excited to make promo for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, inspiration, if I talk about it, because everybody, uh, when, you know, uh, in, a, in their teenage or when they want to be something, they also look up to someone. So who's yeah. your inspiration? Any comedian? I mean, a lot of people kind of inspire you to do. There's a lot of great people, right? you know. Um, in terms of comedy, I wasn't kind of, I, there was no specific kind of, I want to be this comedian. Mm -hmm. I didn't even want to be a comedian until I got into it. And I was like, okay, I'm a comedian. Right. And I'm, you know, relatively good. So I'll keep going at it and get better at it. And... Any people story? around you can inspire you you know oh. um my mom is a soldier my dad has got a work ethic like i have no i've never met anyone who has a work ethic like him oh. i certainly didn't take some of that <laughs> but he's he's brilliant but in terms of entertainment dave Chappelle is is you know just i remember watching Chappelle's show and i'm like this guy's a genius oh. sketch comedies and then Billy Connolly as well. Okay. Who was he's a Scottish comedian legend and I'm just like this guy's amazing. Uh -huh. Ricky Gervais unbelievable. George Carlin just the way he I remember like listening to his shows or albums or watching his specials and I'm like this guy the way he writes mm -hmm. and the way he delivers and and the depth of his material so. You know, and I'm like, this guy's unbelievable. Like, this guy's on another league. But then, yeah, you know, you're inspired by success, so. you know. So when you see people who are successful from football, from sports, like for me, Tiger Woods was a huge inspiration. Because mm -hmm. I used to play golf and this guy was killing it. Every, like, unbelievable what he was doing. So, yeah, it was like every day you want to be Tiger. Um, there is inspiration from people all around you. It was weird to be inspiring. Like, I didn't know that I would be the person people would go up to and be like, oh my God, wow. And I'm like, I want to be like yeah. this almost, yeah, man. <laughs> I'm like, please don't be like me. <laughs> I still haven't figured it out yet. But um, yeah, like you'd hear stories of people who failed and failed and failed and then got it. So all of these kind of stories, um, and even like just stories of people, like for me, I believe in people mm -hmm. and, people can be and do amazing things right so 
in business and art and sport and whatever it is there are stories of individuals or groups that are inspirational and i'd advise people to just go and listen to their stories right you know right everyone's got a story so. and if you're you know lucky enough to be able to share it with more than one person mm -hmm. you should <laughs> actually <laughs> you know? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um i'm still working on my story so yeah We'll keep going. And very soon. Uh, also, guys, you can follow Mr. Hamad and you can check out his Instagram stories. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the Instagram. I'm re like, this is, I'm really bad when it comes to that. But now I'll have like my podcast out, which is called Work and Talks, mm -hmm. which happens out of my Workington office in M7. Okay. In Musharab. And uh, it's actually my office. Like I would have meetings and calls and whatever. Uh-huh. And then there's two, like... Camera. A uh, mic. Two mic arms stuck to my desk. Okay. And then someone would come in, we'll, sw you know, swivel ah, them over oh, and we'll talk. Nice, nice. <laughs> yeah. So it's like a real stuff. It's, it's a real yeah, stuff. Yeah. It's so, like, oh, nice. It's whatever I'm interested in, which is a lot. So mm. entrepreneur, art. I, I feel like the more I get older or the more I understand what I'm trying to do, mm -hmm. I am a fan of expression and I love expression of any kind. Sir. So whether it's fashion, design, music, comedy, business, development, <laughs> coaching, whatever it is, you're, there's a f form of expression that comes out of it. Right. You know, and or it's fueled as a form of expression. Like I have to do this not because it's a job because this is how i express myself right and that kind of resonates you know that's why some content goes because there's some authenticity to it so. and then i would catch a glimpse of that and then we'll sit across the table from each other and sometimes they're not content people they're not right. people who are you know they're producers who've just made amazing things so, so. um so shout out to ahmed al-bakr who's the ceo of qatar studios he was on the podcast and we had a good time because he and his team developed the music videos for all the FIFA songs. They did the opening and closing right. ceremony of the World Cup, which yeah. is a big deal. Big deal, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and, you know, just because... Crazy. Bro. So let's sit down and talk and see yeah. what it's like. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing. And most of my Instagram is about my life, which is not very exciting. <laughs> You know, <laughs> like yesterday I was at a kid's uh, birthday party. So uh -huh. I had to take my daughter to her friend's birthday. Okay. But I also have two boys who are four and two. So I ended up, you know, going on the swings and <laughs> and doing all that exciting stuff and uh, sitting outside of a soft play area, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, that's yeah. a parenthood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like full on dad. And uh yeah, and then I drink a lot of coffee, so Pretty I'll, coffee. Post, I'll post a picture. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. Like, I'm, and it's weird because I get so many people that watch it. Right. And I, I still don't get it. Like, you know, I would disappear for months. Oh, okay. And then I would come back and uh, the numbers are still there and people uh, are still, Oh, nice. But now because of content that we're producing and stuff, the there will need to be a steady stream of communication absolutely <laughs> which i'm not good at so <laughs> <laughs> we have a team that will do that so yeah hopefully there's be Lucky more content yes. that people will enjoy uh, also mr hamad you're very good at accents you know because you also told in the beginning uh, of the interview like yeah. you were in the us the uk and then from yeah. there you adopted accents so we really want to hear some of your accents yeah like which accents you are good at I don't know what I've, I've, I, you know, people are amused by them, but there's some that I enjoy doing. Okay. Yeah. So like, I always get in trouble with the security here in Doha. Okay. Uh, mostly they're West Africans. <laughs> okay. So you would go in and they go, hello, where's your ID? Please, can I have your ID? Yeah. And I go, no, sir, you cannot take my things. <laughs> yeah? What do you mean? This is a private document. <laughs> I cannot give it to you just like that. Huh? Don't ask me for this again. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then, like, you meet people that travel here from the UK, okay. bit of this and that, you know what I mean? Like, real London people, mm -hmm. uh, like geezers, you know what I mean? 
just because I like a bit of football yeah. and watch a bit of football. But the greatest team in the world is Liverpool, so, you know, I like doing the Liverpool Scouse accent sometimes. Okay. Yeah. I've met a couple of people here from Liverpool and they're not friends, they're just Scousers, you know, <laughs> they're good people, like. So we go out and watch the football together. <laughs> um, what else? Yeah, Irish, Irish. Yeah, Irish is proper, like, if you want to go, like, me at 14 years old or 13 years old when I was in Dublin. Yeah, just a proper dub, do you know what I mean? Mm. The weather here is like, what are you after, lad? <laughs> this is like me and my brother at home, we just talk like this, sound like this is normal. Uh, okay. This is just the Alamari household. And the gas. And then there's like the, the Qatari English accent. Oh uh, yeah. Which sometimes I have to make like this to just get clarity. You know, <laughs> because when I speak very fast English, they are not understand, <laughs> and I must slow down. Aiva. <laughs> and also Qatari and Qatari people all speak English very well, <laughs> so we have to speak like Qatari people, no? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, and then yeah, just and then obviously there's like the. Hollywood, you know, just because you like grow up watching all that stuff. Yeah. You know, I blame Hollywood, you know. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so there's just whatever it is that kind of pops into my head. Oh, um, cool. Fre- French, really French, French, French. Uh, no, I can't do that. Uh, uh, Italian. <laughs> I don't, no, I don't. I don't <laughs> Italian. <laughs> Uh, but I'm really bad at Australian, South African. Yeah. Like all I can say is, "All right, how's it going? You all right? Yeah, it's lovely, yeah. isn't it? That's that's about it." Yeah. This uh, was Australian, so, huh? Yeah. Uh, South African is one of the hardest, I think. But it's a lach mabri. All right. Yeah. Like it's just there's diff- I don't know. Uh. I'm not good at it. I wouldn't. <laughs> um, and then. French? Eng- I don't, yeah, I don't think I can do a French English except the stereotypical, like, oh, 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 you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know what they want, you know. Now, yesterday I saw one video of Shraddha Kapoor, uh, one of the Bollywood actors, yeah. and she was doing uh, this French accent. Yeah. And I was like, dude, a very apt, you know, she reminds me of one of my colleagues uh, from uh, uh, Oryx FM. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, good to yeah, say. Yeah. But she was no, crazy. No, for me, like, if I spend enough time with someone... Ah, oh, exactly. ...who I can hear, uh, uh, I will try and just kind of... Uh, you can grab it. Like, yeah. Uh, but okay. I'd need to spend some time with it. Mm. But my, my... These might be stereotypical things that... But this is stuff that we consumed when we were younger, but... But, but the security one was epic. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> no, but my, like, the, the Mexican <laughs> accent was uh, yeah. awesome. Like, for me... It's always like even sometimes, just out of nowhere, uh. me and my at home or whatever and friends, we just like <laughs> break it out. Hey, hombre, cabada, <laughs> listen to me. I have to tell you something. Do you know what happened last night? Do you know this guy? Do you know he tell me? Oh no! <laughs> like just like full on. I oh, love doing man. that. I love doing that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you know, it's not there. There are a bit more that are in the repertoire, but like I don't know, it's I just enjoy doing them. And sometimes if they're, if a joke needs it, it'll help kind of get it across the line. So right. Fantastic, fantastic. And then like I know like there's there's a huge different like array of accents in so, so, in, so. in India, obviously when they speak English. Yeah, in Malayalam yeah. they're different, in Tamil they're yeah, different. Yeah, everyone's Hindi. different. Which one is like the the Oh yeah, which one is that? Yeah, it's a Malayalam one. That's Malayalam. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, like you know what? Really, really, this guy is so good, yeah. Ah. yeah. <laughs> which which part of <laughs> which which India is that? <laughs> no, it's South, South India. That's South? <laughs> okay. But the problem yeah, is, sir, sir, sir like, I was doing uh, this something there, and I found this guy. This guy totally different, sir. Yeah, Very this good. Is, uh, like this is, you know. <laughs> might get into trouble but i just love it <laughs> i love it like it's so much fun to do uh, yeah you um, know say, good morning <laughs> uh, sir, i love it it's like uh, it's like yeah 
There's an airport named Hamid. There's a hospital named Hamid. There's like a thousand streets in the country named Hamid. And no one can say Hamid. What's the correct way? Hamid. Hamid. Yeah. Not Hamad. Yeah, some say Hamad. Hamid is a different name. It's a different dude. Hamid. 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 Hamid Airport. Yeah. HIA. Okay. Hamid Hospital. Hamid Hospital, yeah. Grand Hamid Street. Aiba. Hamid Al Amari. Hamid Al Amari. Amari. Nothing. Amari. Amari, yes. The Builders. The Builders. Ah, okay. This. That's another thing like I find interesting is like people's names is comes from like a you know what they used to do at the time. Ah, so okay. The family name, eh? The family names or whatever, okay. yeah. Like it either comes from a place or a craft. Ah, okay. So a Najjar okay. would be like carpenter. Ah, okay, okay. So the family name is the Najjar. carpenter. Ah. Like in, So like you'd be like Muhammad Al Najjar. Okay. So you know Muhammad is carpenter. So yes, if you were to translate that It'll be the praised carpenter. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine going to like America and it's like Muhammad Al Najjar. Actually, sir, it's the praised carpenter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. Asayad, oh. the catcher okay. or the fisherman. That's a family name. Oh, okay. You know? Oh. So I find, you know. It's it's I know I know I'm just kind of using your time here. So. <laughs> no, no. We have another segment ready. Yeah? All right, let's go. Let's go. So now we're moving to rapid fire round. Sure. Okay. Uh, a quick ones, uh, and I, I I expect that Hamid's uh, reply will be also quicker. Let's let's go. So ladies and gentlemen, rapid fire with Hamid Al Amari. What's the funniest joke you have ever heard? Two bald people fighting over a comb. Okay. And I don't know why, but if you go into a pharmacy and you see people fighting over a comb and none of them have hair. Oh. Okay. Stand up or improv? Stand up. Yeah. Stand up. Like I do improvise. But, okay. Okay. You know, a crafted joke or a story is kind of. But yeah, improv is. I think it's you know you have to have that skill if you want to go into stand up to a certain extent yeah okay favorite comedian I can't answer that man because there's not just one and I've named a few of them George Carlin Richard Pryor Billy Connolly okay Bill Hicks Dave Chappelle Ricky Gervais mm-hmm. but one guy I've recently found and thank God for TikTok <laughs> Ali Sadiq Ali Sadiq huh? he's he's from I think Georgia okay and his flow his style his storytelling his timing. Unbelievable! Oh, okay. Most embarrassing moment you were on stage. I walked on a stage, and I was not ready. Mm-hmm. And I walked because I thought I was ready to go out, but because I was backstage throwing up, um, I walked on the stage, and I could feel like I'm still throwing up. So mm-hmm. I walked straight through the uh-huh. other side. Okay. I threw up and left some of my fluids on the floor <laughs> next to the stage, and I came back from that. Direction, mm. and just got on with it. But oh. yeah, mm. another one was I did this youth TEDx thing, and I was talking to a bunch of the students before I went on. Okay, and I got completely kind of phased. And then I went on, and I just did me, and it looked, and I know that off of that stage mm-hmm. presence. The real value that I had with the students or whatever the conversation was was everything I did off of the stage, <laughs> and then I went on stage and I just rambled. I had no idea what was going on, and oh. I was just like, "Nah." <laughs> and then everyone was like, "Thank you so much." It was very inspirational. I was like, "What did I just say?" <laughs> okay, cat or dogs? Dogs, man. Oh, what's your go to karaoke song? <laughs> Can we sing it together? Yeah, yeah. But I should know the lyrics. You should know the lyrics. Uh, Journey, man. Just a small town girl, slowly, slowly, in a lonely world. Woo-hoo. She took the midnight train going anywhere. Journey, man. Journey, yeah. Journey. And what yes. a fantastic journey you have. Yeah, uh, you're That's still the karaoke song. Yeah, man. But also some hip hop, you know, like. Uh huh. Changes to Pak Shakur. You know, when I'm talking to you, it sounds like I'm talking to some hip hopper. You know, the way you're talking is. Listen, it's that like was a there's a rhythm, part man. of my 
you know, consumption yeah. when I was younger. Okay. 11, 12, 13 mm -hmm. years of age. It was all about... Like, I used to listen to Backstreet Boys and hide it from everyone. Okay, okay. Because you can't go out and be like... Tupac Shakur and Notorious B.I.G. and all East Coast, West Coast, what up, bro? Yo, 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 you know? And then you mean like, D -O -double -G. everyone. You can't, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. Yeah. But also, I was listening to Slipknot and, mm. and also because it didn't fit with uh, the crew. Okay. It was like, I can't talk about Slipknot. Okay. You know? Or whoever else I was listening to. Who was, who was the, who was the other ones? Um, Everyone, corn, corn was a, like, corn. A, yeah, corn, corn, dude, corn. Wow, I haven't listened to corn in a long time. But yeah, uh, hip hop was a big influence on mm. me, you know. Nice. Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Warren G, you know, Bust a Bus, Bust a Bus, Bust a Rhyme. Okay, moving, Good moving times. forward. Yes, yes. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Okay. S What's your favorite one liner? Goodbye. Goodbye, yeah. Yeah, I love saying that. <laughs> <laughs> What's the best uh, compliment you have ever received? The best compliment I've ever received. Mm -hmm. You've lost weight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. Uh, what's your favorite comedy movie of all time? Oh, why are you asking me such difficult ah, questions? That, that's rapid fire. It's not rapid fire. This is a deep question. Comedy movie of all time? <laughs> yeah. Like, the, there's so many. Like, Airplane, Steve Martin, is genius, mm -hmm. but it's not everyone's cup of tea. I watch it because it's stupid, <laughs> and it's funny, and it's, you know, it has so many moments that are epic. Mm -hmm. But then I watched um, a thriller movie which is supposed to be like a horror movie but i found hilarious which was um get out have you watched get out no you have to watch it it's jordan i think it was jordan peele his name the director uh the most yeah. unusual place you have performed a bus a bus ah that's the a bus <laughs> that was like <laughs> without a doubt so a beach vacation or mountain retreat mountain retreat what's your favorite comedy tv show black books probably uh, <laughs> Uh, your ultimate guilty pleasure? Sleep. Mm -hmm. Nice. Your uh, favorite place in Qatar? My sofa. <laughs> Where I sleep. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> Combine my both. <laughs> my kids took it over the bed. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Lucille Boulevard or Sukhwakif? Sukhwakif. Your Friday go to plan? Eat my mom's food oh, and nice. pass out for three hours on the sofa. Your favorite radio show? Uh, wake up with it, man. Oh, yeah, man. Sure. I mean, I tune into every second. I can't miss a second of you. I love you so much. You don't understand how fanboying I am right now. Oh, man. I feel Thank like you. an 11-year-old meeting an honor. someone from BTS right now. This is... <laughs> it's... Do you know Blackpink? No, Blackpink, yeah. Do you, have, do you have kids? I have one, yes. Boy or girl? Boy. Age? Six. Six? Uh, is he into Blackpink? No. No? This is, is this like a... I, I, I don't know who Blackpink is and then I've recently found out and my daughter and her you know like my nieces and nephews and her cousins and the, the, it's like a Korean invasion man oh they're all singing in Korean <laughs> and I thought it was because they're kids and they don't know what the words are <laughs> but they're actually singing <laughs> and I'm like what are you trying to say something <laughs> But Blackpink and BTS are yeah. like, you know, the popular. The, they're like, you know, NSYNC and Backstreet Boys of, of today. Mm, yeah. You know, the K-pop is the taking over the world. Yeah. Korean series, Korean dramas, Korean pop. That's that's a film. You should ask me about film. Have you watched um, everything uh, everywhere all at once? You Maybe have to watch that. You have huh? to watch. If you're going to do anything today. Not on Netflix? Where? It's everywhere, I think. I don't know if it's on Netflix, but um, yeah, you, you should be able to find it. Okay. It's on, and it'll be on one of the streaming platforms, but you can always buy it. Oh. Um, but yeah, everything everywhere all at once. Oh. It won, I think, it cleaned up the Oscars last year. Okay. And it's incredible. Parasite as well. Have okay. you watched that film? Parasite, I saw. Yeah. That is hilarious. Man. Yes, yes. Now, what a film. Unbelievable. Like, oh my God, what a film. Right. So these guys are doing like amazing things. So. Um, 
But yeah, now I know Blackpink songs. Yeah. Which is, you know. Code and pop. I'm Look. just worried it gets to the fashion stage, you know, because I'm like very close with my children. Okay. So I would wear, like, if they're into Spider Man, I become Spider Man. <laughs> so if my daughter becomes, like, you know, super into Blackpink, I don't know what I'll look like in a skirt. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so how was... uh, that's uh, uh, dad love. Yeah. The last thing which I want to know your message to the yeah. inspiring comedians. Or the, the person who wants to be an anchor. Yeah. Uh, yeah Yo, few tips. Q tips. Uh, sorry, Hama tips. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. I'm still trying to figure it out. But if you love something, don't take it for granted. Mm-hmm. And take a risk. We're very lucky to be living in the time that we are today. All right. And. Making mistakes is okay. And make the mistakes, go out there, make some noise, do it. But do it for you. Right. You know? Really do it for yourself. So. Don't do it because someone else thinks that, you know, you should. Right. So, guys, with this, <laughs> we're gonna, we gonna say thank you to Mr. Hamid. For your valuable time. Thank It's you. really wonderful having you on show. And I'm sure this video and this interview will, uh, you know, people can learn a lot from this interview and a great experience. <laughs> and uh, please, guys, also shout out, uh, I mean, uh, follow Mr. Hamid and uh, watch his podcast. And now closing with top five stuff. Mm-hmm. Because you're also a Qatari guy. Yeah. So top five places in Qatar. Um... Zakrit. Okay. For me the the anywhere in Zakrit but specifically near the Zubara Fort? Uh the Richards East West West East. Okay. That for me that that that's just a beautiful thing so, everyone so. should experience. Um Sugwagaf. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Just because you know, there's nostalgia, there's memories, there's good times and the best kebab in the country. Right. Um, the pearl for me, but like the Porto Arabia, Porto Viva Bahia side. It's just like it's just calm and nice, and you can go for a walk. And it's, it's you know, I have friends that live there, so it's, it's really nice. We I overstay my welcome, and then Musharib because you have an office just, there. I, I mean, my office is there, but also like there's really cool coffee shops, there's really cool people around, right? Right. And it's the entire fun, vibe so, is uh, quite yeah, different. Yeah, it's, it's a different vibe from Doha. Yeah, so yeah. it feels... it feels. I like the vibe there. Yeah. yeah. Um, And number five. My sofa. <laughs> <laughs> no, you But can't no invite everyone. There, Come on, yeah. yeah. Just just the wife and kids. <laughs> and a couple of nephews and nieces, <laughs> you know. I only have one nephew, but we'll work, work on it, boys. Come on, <laughs> sort yourself out. <laughs> no, I have two nephews. Two. Ooh. Oh. I've just upset my sister. Okay. It's okay. Sorry, right. he doesn't like me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Just jokes. No, um, number five, number five, yes. In the north. Like, not Zabata Fort, just after Zabata Fort. Okay. There's really, that uh, bus fair, you know, they made something to preserve the wildlife. Uh, or maybe the. There's, there's loads, but generally that area for okay, me. Okay, okay. Um, before, like, around, just after Jamel village. Ah, okay. Um, It's just waves and uh, water and the way it is. I just feel like at peace there and sometimes I go and chill there. And uh, I love spending time in nature. So oh. there'll be days if I'm not, if I'm not, you know, happy or I feel a bit down, I would go home, pick up my, you know, sleeping bag or whatever. And I would just go spend the night in the oh. desert on my own and just oh, nice. have a good time. I have my chair, my speaker and my tea maker. Aiva. And just chill. That's a true authentic <laughs> country style. Yeah, yeah. Just no one else. Like I don't, you know. I like being alone. Okay. I really do. Cool, cool, yeah. cool. From there, you you get a lot of ideas also when you're alone, and it's sort of like self healing time, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Sometimes it's healing. Sometimes it's just running away from something. Sometimes it's just you know getting deeper into yourself. Sometimes it's just the quiet. Mm, right. You know, we right. live 
very busy lives and we have a lot of stimulus coming at us from everywhere so sometimes it's just go and do nothing okay and that's one thing that i feel like this is a man thing is that we have an ability to actually do absolutely nothing mm -hmm. for a long time <laughs> and i enjoy that so much <laughs> And you can't do it at home. <laughs> so that's why you gotta go to the middle of the desert. <laughs> and be like, now I can do nothing. Nothing. <laughs> In search for nothing. Cool, that's cool, probably cool. gonna be the name of my film. In search of nothing. In search of nothing. Yeah. Okay, now the last top five, because you're a Qatari guy. Mm -hmm. Top five dishes which you want to recommend that if somebody's coming to Qatar, he okay. or she should. Must this try. one we stole from you, or I think we co-collaborated, which is Kalak. You have to have a cup of tea. Okay. Like Kalak. Madruba is my favorite Qatari okay. dish. Okay. Uh, just, and if it's got the lime, and Chef Noor, uh, Noor Al Marri, I believe, from NMOQ, she has Desert Rose. She made a green Madruba. Okay. And I only found out about that because of we were filming a uh -huh. event there mm -hmm. or a sh a sh yeah some of the last Qatar episode yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <sighs> and then i put it in my mouth and i was like oh my god so madruba <laughs> el gamot okay. el gamot you know el gamot the they're like dough balls floating dough yeah, balls yeah 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 them yeah much boost man <laughs> if you come to doha and you don't have much boost that's a problem oh. like you have to have much boost and then there's Mensef, which is a Palestinian and Jordanian, or Jordanian, and then there's Palestinian iterations of the dish. Okay. Enab, which is wrapped vine leaves. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 That's yeah, That's my favorite. Squeeze yes. some lemon on that, and uh -huh. just boom. Boom. So, uh, I'm having steak. Yeah. Steak is my thing. I love steak. Steak. Yeah. Steak. Oh, my God. Oh, cool. Yeah. We are wrapping up. Thank you so much, Mr. Hamad Al Amari, for your time. It's really good to have you and so much fun. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much.